afternoon, sir, do you? He's dead. Hello, Bissett. Bring the car around now, will you? Will you be late tonight, or are you spending the night in town? No. Not much after 11. He's an old man. Are you going out tonight? No, I don't think so. Well, I'll see you later, then. Have a lovely time. I'm just going up for half an hour. See Mrs. Lanyon. I won't be long. Yes, madam. Where have you been? And don't say with Ethel Lanyon, because she's in Scotland with her husband. I thought you were up tonight. I was. It happens that I got back at 9 o'clock, whereas you get back at 10.15. And I thought you weren't going out. I decided later that I would be. Four minutes after I left. You have been creeping around, haven't you? Not until tonight. Ten days ago, I rang you here in the evening when you said you'd be in, and you weren't. I rang three times. That's proving that her husband's place is in the home. No? Where were you? What, tonight or ten days ago? Both. John. Out of the seven nights that go up to make a week of my loosely termed married life, I tend to find myself alone on at least four of them, for one reason or another. Does it surprise you so much that I should go out now and then to find someone to talk to? Who, for instance? Well, whoever happens to be in. Who happens to be in at the moment? What happened to your date? I thought you were dining with Sir Louis Force. Wasn't she in? Unfortunately, my date died in his car on the way. I can only assume that yours didn't. What, I wonder, is the matter with him this morning? Yes. Well, I hardly think old Sir Louis' death would have done anything to him, apart from robbed him of a good dinner. No. Oh, well, to work on. Uh, look, remember, she's quick off the mark. Not really made for stop-starts around the shops. It's like the last meal of high noon, isn't it? It wouldn't surprise me if it was. Well, why do you say that? Well, don't you know? Pamela Wilder has been having an affair with Frank Hackerton. Don't be ridiculous. 
Have you had it running? We've had it running some time over the last couple of days. Stopped Any... testing yesterday afternoon. Any snags? Well, nothing apparent. We're going to strip it down today and have a look. Does it do what it's supposed to do? Oh, yes. I said it would, didn't I? Come in. Sit down. What are you doing on Friday? Friday? Well, there's been a bit of a brouhaha about our contract for the M27, as I thought there would be. They don't like being undercut. And they don't like being undercut by so much. It makes them look uh, foolish at best. And at worst, that their figures are seriously far out. They'll just have to adjust to the facts of life then, won't they? Yeah, well, I don't think I'll take it lying down. There are already a couple of rumours that I've put in a low figure for internal reasons just to get the contract, and that when it comes to the point, we'll fall down on the job. So? So, now that we've got all the patents covered that we need, I'm going to give a little cocktail party to introduce your machine and yourself to the trade. Friday, all right? Fine. What do you want to do? Have the machine actually working? Yes, get some men to clear a stretch behind the fabrication sheds and lay down a stretch of roadway. I want it just as it would be on an actual site. Right. I'll hire a couple of dozen method actors to lean on cardboard shovels. You just make that machine work, that's all. Don't make an opera out of it. We'll probably have the opera later. You say Marjorie saw them? Twice. London's the worst place to have an affair. There's always someone about. How do you know it's an affair? Because it shows. Uh, 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 At uh, least uh, it shows to another woman. How long do you think it's been going on? It was a gap of about a month between the two times that Marjorie saw them. Would you care to order now, sir? Um, no, I think we'll wait until my father arrives. Okay, I'll set it, sir. Mm. I don't think we'll mention this to father. Just as you like. It's only gossip, anyway. Just at the moment, I don't think it'd be a good idea to have John upset by father using this as a new piece of ammunition. And um, I don't think we'll mention it to anyone else, for that matter. Darling, have you ever tried to put a stopper on gossip? No, but we can put a stopper on us, can't we? Hello, Father. What can I get you to drink? It's one of Wilder's haunts, this, isn't it? Oh, well, he introduced me. We use it now and then. Whiskey. Now, what's all this I hear about Wilder's wife, this chap Haggard? if you were going to have a spot of lunch. Yes? Would you be wanting me for anything before two o'clock, Sir John? No, no, you can run along. Thank you. What did you say? We had lunch. What time is it? Ten to one. Oh, so it is. Are you uh, eating here or going out? I think I'd be probably eating here. Do you want a drink? Yeah, a scotch, please. Do you, uh, do you see much of Pamela these days? Well, I call in sometimes, now and then. She, uh, she must be on her own a lot, now that I spend so much time in town. Yes. Yeah. Well, I cannot not have a flat in town, Don. It'd be impossible, all this toing and froing. There'd be little time left for anything else. No, no, quite. Do you... <laughs> does she... I mean, what, what does she do? Does she... Does she go out a lot, or...? I don't know, John. Hmm. John, what do you do with your evenings when you're in town? Who is it, Don? 
Who's what? Don't you know? Well, she's uh, never said anything to me. About anything. But you're not surprised to find that there might be. <laughs> well, I think you must be exaggerating. No. But Pamela would never. You know as much about women as all that, do you? Come on, let's go and have some lunch. Does he know? John, no, I don't think so. Well, who was he told you, Ken? Well, I don't think that really matters, does it? You heard as well, so it would seem to be true. Yeah, I should imagine so. He's got himself in a right tangle, hasn't he? Running a popsy in Notting Hill, and his wife skipping about with his blue-eyed boy. Oh, serve him damn well right. Do not adultery commit. Advantage rarely comes of it. How is Haggerton's machine coming along? Well, it seems to be quite successful by all accounts. Wilder's having a grand opening this Friday. Have you had your invitation? Yes. Is it completed then? No, there's quite a bit more Haggerton's got to do to make it an um, economic proposition, but it um, doesn't seem any doubt it'll work all right. How long is it going to take? Oh, about two or three months or so. Isn't Wilder being a bit uh, premature, handing the drinks around? Not really, I don't think, no. The work can go on in it afterwards. No, I think he wants to prove his point publicly, and incidentally, silence a lot of rumours that aren't too good for Blyze. Well, if the machine does what they say it'll do, they'll have both done a good job. Well, what is this marvellous machine, anyway? Well, um, it prepares the foundations for a roadway in about half the time, and at considerably less cost. Um, um, it compacts granular subsoils. Um, he is uh, committed to it, though, isn't he? He's already put in his price on the assumption that the machine will do what uh, he hopes it will. But uh, if anything goes wrong, well, Blyze will still have to do the job at that price. But isn't that a bit of a risk? A bit of a risk? It's the sort of risk that keeps the official receiver in office. Ken, you say uh, you don't think uh, Wilder knows anything about his wife and this chap Haggerton? No. Hmm, well, I think we'd better make sure that he doesn't hear anything about it, don't you? At least until this uh, machine is firing on all cylinders. The premature departure of Mr. Haggerton would be rather more disastrous to Blythe than the loss of Lady Wilder's chastity. What do you want for lunch? We'll have the gazpacho to start with. Gazpacho? For both, sir. For both. Then the uh, vatazoi. Vatazoi. And uh, a bottle of your Volnay, your number 27. Mm. Certainly, sir. So we'd better bring that now. Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, afterwards we'll want care a la creme. We'd better order that now because I don't want it with cream and sugar. I want it with finely chopped chives. Certainly, sir. What's the matter? What's the matter with what? You. I can always tell something's wrong when you start being excessively masterful. Is that what I was being? I don't want it with sugar and cream. Do you want it with sugar and cream? I'm sorry I dragged you to the concert. I enjoyed it. You didn't hear it. Didn't I? All right. John. Don't John me like that, Susan. It's very irritating. That's all right. Did you enjoy the music? Very nice. I think it's a pity that people have underestimated Elgar for so long. I suppose it's all that pomp and circumstance and land of hope and glory. Well, he hated it, you know. Did he? Yeah, all right. Well, perhaps now that trousers have got narrower, they'll begin to reassess Edwardian music. Yes. Does it work? Me? Or Pamela? I think she's seeing somebody. I see. In fact, I'm certain. 
And you're surprised to find that you're disturbed by it. Yes. Oh, what are you going to do about it? I don't it? know. Would well, you know who it is? No. Are you going to try and find out? Yes. And then what will you do? I have no idea. At the moment, I might possibly kill him. Why is it that men always assume that they should kill their wife's lovers, but it never crosses their minds that their wife should kill them for having a mistress? You told me once you didn't love her. Yes. But she is a possession of yours. You could divorce her. Yes. Yeah. Will you? I don't know. I see. Well, this is a very funny conversation to be having, isn't it? Why? Because I'd like nothing better than that you divorce her so that you could marry me. I sit here like a, a marriage guidance counsellor while you tell me you may or may not divorce her, which means you may or may not marry me. Which means, when we get down to brass tacks, that you may or may not actually love me. Have you got a cigarette? You'll ruin the taste of the gazpacho. Blast the gazpacho. No, I did not say that I wouldn't divorce her. I said I didn't know. Here, in this place, at this moment, I don't know. But I could have hoped that here, in this place, with me, you might have known. Cheers to funny conversations. Are you staying with me tonight? No, I think I perhaps get better get back. I see. I said I would. I see. I doubt it. Then you'd be wrong, wouldn't you? Well, let's leave it at that then. No. John, you don't honestly expect me to take a back seat through all this, do you? As if it had nothing to do with me. It has got something to do with me. It's part of my life. But what happens to you happens to me. If you divorce her, there's still me, and if you don't divorce her, there's still me. What about me? Look, I'm not incidental to you. I'm not one of your employees. And I am not your whore. You share my bed because I love you, and you wouldn't be there for any other reason. I don't think that I'm prepared to discuss this any further at the moment, Susan. Gaspacho, eh? I saw a light on. I thought perhaps we had desperate burglars in. No, no. Hello, Frank. Ah, you still working? Just finished. We finally got her stripped down. It's all right. I'll have to get a replacement vibrator, but she'll sing like Tito Gobby for you on Friday. Good, good. You're working late, aren't you? No, oh, no, no, not really. I just popped in. I'm very pleased with your machine, Frank. I think you've done a good job on it. Oh, good, good. It's, uh, yeah, it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll probably amaze them on Friday. Yeah. We'll have them falling about. Frank? Yeah? Oh, never mind. You going home now? Yes, I think so. Are you? No, I think I'd probably stay for a while. There's some things I would look over. Right. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Good night, Frank. Good night, John.
Come in. Good morning, fellow. Where's the big white chief? Do you mean John? Do you know, I think I do. He went down to Kennedy's office for a moment. Right. I'll hang on. Busy? Are you, um, doing anything for lunch? Why? Are you offering to buy me some? Well, I thought you might like a drink with me first. It's very nice of you, Donald. I don't much like being called Donald, as a matter of fact. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Didn't you? This is a new hobby of yours, is it? Pouring drinks down my throat. What is it, a rat race therapy you read about in some woman's magazine? Yes. It comes under the heading of being friendly toward people. Well, it's very nice of you, Donna, old friend. Right, well, shall we say about uh, one o'clock, then? Okay. Hi, uh, Frank. Do you want to see me? Just to keep you up to date. Oh, uh, Don. I have to go out to Manchester. They're having Sir Louis Force's funeral there. It's his hometown. I shall be seeing Fortescue there while I'm up, so I won't be back till sometime on Friday. I have to leave the arrangements for the cocktail party to you. Sure. Will you be in tomorrow? Oh, yes. I'll catch the midnight up. And I shall have to rely on you to see that your side of the show is all right, Frank. Don't worry. It'll be all right on the night. Matter of fact, that's what I came in about. I'm going to go over to Aylesbury myself to pick up that replacement vibrator. I'd rather have it here than have any hold-ups in the delivery. Fine. I just thought I'd let you know where I am in case you wonder where I was. If you see what I mean. Yes. I'll see you Friday, then. And I'll see you for a glass of ale lunchtime, Donald. Uh, Don. Drinks? I thought you didn't like my blue-eyed boy, as I believe they call him. Well, I thought I'd try and be a little more friendly towards him. It's not going to be easy by any means. No, he's not so bad. No. Pretty cups. Yes. They were a wedding present. Yes, very nice. You're lucky to have been able to have kept them for so long. Yes. I've been trying to size you up, Pamela. Whether you're the sort of woman to whom one can be blunt, or whether one would have to be circumlocutory. Well, that would depend on what you have to say to me, I suppose. Yes. If your relationship with Frank Haggard and reaches the ears of your husband, it could do a great deal of damage to Bly's, as well as the obvious effect on your marriage. I thought I'd try being blunt. You are. I'm not making any moral judgments. As far as I know, your relationship may be completely innocent. I'm not concerned with its nature, only with its existence. You are having a relationship with Frank Haggard, aren't you? Even if I were casual, it couldn't possibly have the slightest thing to do with you. Unfortunately, it has. Why? If your husband sacks Haggerton now, it could cost Blythe a very great deal. Oh, I see. Money. Well, my relationship with your husband is a business one. Even so, it's still no business of yours, even if I were having a, a relationship, as you call it. I know you are. Have you put detectives on me? No. People have seen you. And John? I gather he doesn't know. I don't know how much he doesn't know. He knows there's probably someone. What do you do about that? Nothing. Exactly the same as I do nothing about Susan Weldon. I see. So you know about that too, do you? As you obviously do. It was a perfectly average 20th century marriage. <laughs> I'm sorry, Caswell. You have to find some other way of protecting your investment. I'm not prepared to give up a single thing to help the Bly balance sheet. I'm not asking you to give him up. No? What are you asking me, then? At the moment, your husband knows there is someone, but he doesn't know who. Now, I don't want him to find out for at least a month, and you presumably don't want him to find out at all. Therefore, it would be in both our interests if you and Frank Haggerton were not to meet for the next few weeks. After that... How kind of you. I'm 
not entirely ignorant about these matters, um, Pamela. I realize the nature of physical attraction being what it is, that it's easier said than done. But meeting in public places must stop. However, if it's um, a case of um, geographical inconvenience, I'm, um, I'm willing to put my country cottage at your disposal. You ought to have been an extramarital guidance counsellor. I'll leave it to you then. Cheers. Go on. Well, <coughs> it's come to my ears. Oh, my word. It's come to that, has it? To his ears. Can you speak in triplicate as well as write out reports in it? That you've been seeing rather a lot of a certain lady. I see. Good. Naming no names. As you say. Where'd you hear this? Never mind where I heard it, but it's got to stop. And may I ask what the hell it's got to do with you? I'm not prepared to stand by and see her name dragged in the mud. A grand old English gentleman. She happens to be a friend of mine. And you'd rather you were getting it than me. As Santa Claus said to the turkey, Donald, get stuffed. I suppose there's no point in my trying to convince you that loyalty to John... No, there isn't. No, I thought probably not. He'll sell me out when he's done with me, whether I've been over-friendly with his wife or not. Not necessarily. That's got nothing to do with it. And it's got nothing to do with you either. Oh, yes, it has. I warn you, if you try to make it have something to do with you, I'll smash your face across the length of your fancy desk. Yes, I've no doubt you would. So keep your blasted nose out of your boss's ear. Well, I don't want John to know either. Well, that's all right, then. We're all in it together. I'm telling you, Hackerton, stop bothering Pamela. Oh, that's what I'm doing, is it? She's got her mind on something else, I suppose. Look, Henderson, it really hasn't got anything to do with you. And it's enough of a problem for us to handle without having you stick your oar in and make it look like something nasty. So stay out. Now, I don't suppose you're going to buy me lunch, are you? Not unless I have to. Fine. I have to get to Aylesbury, where the ducks come from, you know. So, Bly knows and Don knows. And that probably means 50 other people now. Perhaps Bly's right. You want to pack it in? No, no, I don't want to. Frank, do you love me? Yes. If we don't pack it in, he'll find out, won't he? I expect so. Then he'll send you away and we'll never see each other again. He's only your husband. He's not God. I know him, Frank. He'd have you blacklisted everywhere within 100 miles. You could try it. Oh, be realistic, darling. You go where you could get the best job. You'd go back to Italy, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? He doesn't love me. It's just that he's angry now. When he stops being angry, if we do nothing for a few weeks, if everybody thinks it's over... All right. Only a few weeks, please. Sure. Look, he's going away tomorrow. How about a little farewell dinner to us? For the last time for a while. Time's a train. Oh, midnight. Oh. I think possibly that I owe you an apology. Oh, you do, you do. Then I offer it unreservedly. No, I don't want an apology. I only want you. And by chance, I happen to be here. 
Mm. What um, happened? Is it all over? I don't know. Oh. Well, I simply decided to let it lie. It might be to our advantage. Yes. Well, at least it makes things more simple for us. It puts you both on equal terms. You mean no divorce on either side? No, no, I don't. I've decided not to think about it for two or three weeks, unless they're so stupid to make it public, and I don't think Pamela would do that. Good. What's the matter? <laughs> Nothing's the matter. Oh, come on, yes, it is. Look, you could if you wanted to. You, you could divorce her if you wanted to be free. I don't know who the correspondent is. Do you? Susan, you know something. At what time did you say your time was? Oh, John, everybody knows it's common gossip. Only today somebody in the office... Who is it? You must know. Who is it? Well, who do you think it is? Frank Hagadon. Now, that's what they're all saying. They've been seen. Hello, Justine. Put Kenneth on. Where? Thank you. Caswell? Ken! Wilder. You know? He wants a Hagadon contract cancelled. Well, it'll cost us 8000 odd. What do you mean, cancelled? And the reception called off. Oh, no, the reception won't be called off. What's all this about? He knows. Well, now the whole of London knows. He was the only one who didn't. I don't think anybody would say anything if you didn't. Don't you think so, Doc? Is John going straight there? Yes, he should be there about uh, half past five. Have you spoken to him? No, he sent a telegram. Uh, things... Look, I, I, I know things have been a little difficult between you and John for some time. I mean, one's bound to notice, knowing you both so well. Drink up your drink, Don. Yeah, I suppose he took advantage of that. I mean, he's the sort of chap who can size up a situation pretty quickly. Oh, he's shrewd. I'll give him that. Yes, I suppose he saw how the land lay and decided to turn it to his advantage. Oh, who on earth are you talking about? You know, he's what they uh, used to call a rotter. Don, are you talking about Frank? All that brash. I can do anything. Just watch me. Out to get to the top. Well, obviously. As soon as he saw the boss, had a pretty wife. Don. He's out for all he can get. Don. He saw you and he saw John. And I suppose he thought, while I'm here... Don, for God's sake, he didn't seduce me. 
have another drink? Uh, no, no, thank you. He's not brash, really. He's very gentle. He'd rather do a good job because it is good not to defeat someone else or to make a million. But he's in your world. So he takes you on your terms. He takes the top rate and he makes you feel uncomfortable by telling you the truth. But Pamela, he's... Don! He... It's got nothing to do with Blythe. And it's got nothing to do with you. And I'm not going to sit here and listen to you saying unpleasant things about him. Oh. You know what'll happen, don't you? Yes. John will send him away. Come on. We're going to be late. I must get all of Haggerton first. What with John's performing machine and everything else, the whole thing's turned into a bit of a circus, hasn't it? Mm. In the old days, of course, a circus was a place where wild beasts tore people apart. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll go on in. Why did you have to come? He's arrived. He's downstairs. I'll be in his office. You go on. Frank, I... Please. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, John, Hagerden is in your office. What do you expect me to say? Does she love you? I think so. How long has this been going on? About two months. Do you love her? Yes. Do you? I brought you here. Oh, now, don't start that with me. You didn't take me out of the gutter. You took me from one highly paid job to another highly paid job, and nothing else. But it didn't give you the right to make a set at my wife. Maybe you should have thought about that when you were playing putter cake with your Popsy and Paddington. Notting Hill. There's no difference between you and me, Wilder. Except you're going to play the bloody tycoon, aren't you? I'll finish you, Harrigan. I'll finish you wherever you go. No, you won't. You'll try, but you pay the other price of tycoonery now. There's more people against you than there are for you. And most of them are in that room there. I could get a job in ten minutes under your nose. And they do it just to see the look on your face. You're finished here anyway. Not until my contract runs out. Unless you want to give me a golden handshake. And I don't think you much want to shake my hand at the present time, do you? I haven't time to shake hands with all the losers. Oh, for God's sake, why don't you get it through your head? Nobody's going to win. Nobody ever does. And you can't suck me until that machine's finished. I'm bringing somebody else in. You've got three weeks to finish the job. And then I'm transferring you. I thought that's what it would be. Well, you didn't think that I was going to have you hanging around here, did you? No, I wouldn't expect you to. So I'm still in business? More or less. But in the meantime, you will make no attempt to see my wife. No. No, I won't see her. All right, wait outside and we'll go in together. I don't need you to hold my hand. Don't bite the hand that gives you the golden handshake. All right? Oh, yes. Everybody in there? Yes. All right, then. 
We'll take it step by step. Have you fired him? More or less. Oh, the golden handshake, I suppose. Do you imagine that he's going to sleep with my wife and get five or six thousand pounds for the pleasure of it? He's got three weeks to finish his business here. And then he works out the rest of his contract in North Africa on site in Libya. Sir George. This is Frank Haggerton who made the machine. Sir George Carroll. How do you do? George. My wife, Mr. Haggerton. How do you do? Mr. Peter Smythe. How do you do, sir? George Harris. Charles Munro. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Haggerton? Now, we've met some rest here. Louis von Koop. I think you know. How are you? The George of Mary. Yes. 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 Yes.